basically putting headphones on and transcribing. It used to be 120 songs we used to start off with. So that's Steve Parry. He's the arranger for The Voice. And he did a special session for our sax school members this week where he shared three amazing arranging tactics that I want to share with you today. Now don't click away just yet because the thing is, even if you're not playing in a horn section yet, Trust me, as a saxophone player, you really need to know these tactics because you can apply them even if you're just writing for two saxophones in a duet or whether you're playing with one or two other saxophones or trumpets or trombones, or even if you're going all the way to saxophone legend status and playing in a horn band. Would you say that the stuff we're gonna talk about today would help people, doesn't matter what level they're at? Oh, definitely. I mean, the thing about with horn ranging is you don't have to make things complicated to make it sound good. Even if you've only got two people, a trumpet and a saxophone maybe, you can still make it sound great just with the two of you. Just makes the band sound better when you're there. Oh, by the way, if you want to get access to the complete masterclass we did with Steve Parry and the entire library of all the other lessons and courses in SAC School, well, you can grab the 14-day trial. As I film this, it's actually still running and the link is down below. So I wanted to start this whole conversation from the absolute beginning. So I asked Steve, what about if you are just playing with one other saxophone or one other horn player and you have no other experience with writing for a horn section, what's the easiest but also really effective tactic that you can use? Well, the, the best thing to do is play in unison or octave. It sounds very simplistic, but if you've got two or three people playing in, in like a couple of octaves, it's really powerful, you know, and you, your lines don't have to be complicated at all. You know, they, they can be just long notes or they can be the odd stab, you know, you can just play on beat two if you want. But if we're talking about soul music, for instance, <clears throat> there's so many, those old soul records from the 60s like Motown, Stax, all those sort of things. You listen to those, like for instance, Soul Man, that's a classic example. <laughs> So, I mean, that's, that's about as simple as you can get. You know, one note on the tonic, in unison. Thank you very much. Done. There you go. That's it. We don't need to know anything else. Just need to play in unison. I love this. So it just goes to show our first tactic is so simple, but it really, really works. And it's been used on famous tracks like Sam and Dave's Soul Man. So we're talking about unison here, and that's simply taking the top line and then doubling it on the other instrument, whether that's two altos or two tenors or an alto and a tenor, you choose. So if we look at the music here for Soul Man, it's in the key of G concert. That means the alto saxophone's in the key of E, the tenor saxophone's in the key of A. Now we're just playing one long note, which is an E on alto or an A on tenor. So if you're in a band playing this and you've got two alto saxophones, well, you just play an E, but you could put one of them down the octave. But of course, if you've got an alto and a tenor, well, the tenor can play down the octave and that's gonna give you a really big fat sound. Now, it's also worth mentioning that that unison technique is used in the opening line of Soul Man. You know the one. But check it out, when you add a second saxophone to that line, just in unison, just playing in octaves, how much more powerful does that sound? Finally, I've got someone to play with in the studio. So what's the next step past that then? If we've got our concept of using octaves, if we want to spice things up and add a bit more interest, what's the next step past that? Well, you can always add a harmony, like a, a third a third above is usually what we say. So if you've got, if that's the key we're in, do 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 dum, you're playing that note, you go bum, that's the third above. So if you go ba da 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 dum, the third above will be ba da 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 dum. The other thing you can do is to flip that round. So if you put, if you've got your tune there and your third, you can put the tune an octave higher, and that's called a sixth. So it's just a, a third inverted, really. You can play a line in octaves, and then if you want to play it twice, do the second time in thirds or sixths. That's a, just a nice little bit of interest that you can do. And again, that's not a complicated thing to do. You're not trying to work out any weird chords or passing notes or any weird voicings. It's just you're in thirds or, or sixth if you're going the other way around. Okay, I love this second tactic. And Steve goes on to say how pretty much all the time in soul music and a lot of pop music as well, we're just sticking within the key signature. So you don't need to be too caught up trying to find complicated harmony notes here that aren't in the key of the song. But there's an important thing that he said here, and that is that when we find that second harmony by going a third up or three steps up the scale 
from the first note, it always sounds better if you take that upper note, the third above, and then you drop it down into the lower voice. So in our example, where we've got an alto and a tenor in the horn section, the alto would play the main melody note, which in this case is the naming note of the chord, and then the tenor would play a third above that, but an octave lower, and that gives you a really fat sound. Hey, we've got one more tactic for you, but just before we get onto that, let me know in a comment if you already play in a horn section like this. It could just be with one other saxophone, or maybe you play in a, in a group with a whole load of other horns. Let me know in a comment. Now, I don't know about you, but the next thing that I was wondering about is what if you have more than just two horns? What if you've got three or even four, that's five, or even four horns in our section? How then can we easily use harmony to make our horn section sound awesome? I mean, another good tip, if you've got three people in your horn section, if you have somebody who's on the melody, somebody is on your harmony below it, then you just double the melody down the octave. You know, because that just reinforces any way you can reinforce that melody, you know, that it'll just punch it across, it'll make people listen to it. And then your harmony is just a little addition that colours it, sounds nice. So, you know, even if, uh, let's say you've got four horns, you know, it's best to have somebody on the melody, one person on the harmony, and then maybe two down here on the octave below the melody, you know, that's just really going to make Love things. It. Can you explain that scenario then if we had an alto, a tenor and a barry in a horn section? Well, a baritone is always a, a good fun instrument to have. So if you've, if you've got those sort of things, you can have some great octaves. You have your alto only melody, the tenor can be an octave below it, and your baritone can be an octave below that. So you've got three versions in, you know, of this melody and that is really really strong That's so all, really all moving in parallel like that you mean all moving in parallel you don't even need your harmony yet if you want to put your harmony in maybe put your baritone where your tenor was and move your tenor up to the third and then so you'll have that thing going on uh, i mean that's a nice thing but honestly that if you've got three in three different octaves just on the tune that's so powerful if we <laughs> if we had another combination of three i'm just trying to think what a typical horn section that our members might find themselves in. So if they're in a scenario where there was a trumpet, a trombone and a tenor saxophone, let's say. Classic. What would we do then? Well, a lot of the time I would put the tenor and the trombone in unison together and you have the, the trumpet and octave above. So that's a good thing. If When you start doubling your melody up here, especially if it's on a tenor. So on a, on a trumpet, you might be in the middle of the range of the trumpet. However, when it's on the tenor on the same note, you're right up the top of the instrument. So you, you've got to watch with intonation problems there. So you're much better having that down the octave. Like I say, the trumpet and the, the trumpet above and the tenor and the trombone together there, that's a really strong sound. Right. And again, that's quite simple. So yeah, and again, if you want the harmony, then you'll put your tenor up. up okay. So there. trumpet and trombone in parallel, well, all parallel, but you know, octave apart and then the tenor on the harmony. How interesting is it to hear somebody who's at the top of their game making this complicated thing seem really simple? I love that we've got three easy tactics. I bet you can't wait to try them out yourself. So we've talked about having unison, so playing the same note, or the same note but an octave apart. And then we talked about having a third above, but then take that harmony note that's the third above and put that down the octave. That's a really powerful sound. And then third, we talked about using that concept four, two, three, four instruments or more, where you've got the top note, you've got your third above, which is an octave below, and then all the other notes are just the same as the top note, but an octave below, or maybe two octaves below if you've got a Barry Sax. Man, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed the rest of this masterclass with Steve Parry, because he also dug into what it was like working on a show like The Voice, and the volume of work that he has to do for transcribing and writing out hundreds of charts sometimes in a really short period of time. And he also spoke a little bit about some of the other amazing shows he's working on. Really, really inspiring. Don't forget, if you want to check out the full masterclass, grab that 14-day trial, and uh, then you'll get access to that. But go ahead and put these things into action right now. And then I'd love to hear back from you if you can use some of these harmony concepts in your next project. If you've got all your saxophones, how many fingers have I got? <laughs> yeah, one, two, three, four, five. You've got all these saxophones going up and then suddenly it becomes 